So we are saying regression analysis is used like a predictor, a predictor of a various quantity, either you went to the field and you missed a particular value, or, or, or let's say when you're entering marks. Let's say we have student A, Uh, who, uh, who, who had maybe marks uh, max in, in maths and English. And when you're entering the marks, maybe he, for maths he got 40. Maybe for student A. Uh, for student B, he got let's say 50. Uh, C got 60. Then got another 40. Let's say got 30. And in English, this one is student A, B, C, D, and E. Then the other student here got 50, maybe they got 60, maybe they got 20, and they got 10. And when you're entering marks, you are in a hurry. You want to come and approximate basically for student E, the marks that he got. Maybe you made an error, or uh, because we are human into error, you missed a particular mark. And you want to give basically a mark that will be able to predict basically how the trend in the class it was happening. So basically you can be able not to use the regression, basically an equation that we shall be able to use to assist us to get at least this a variable or even to predict a, a value that is not there. So it can, it can still be used as a predictor, it can still be used as, as a predictor of, of a value that is not there or the, that you want to do. I think I can be able to do an example, but before we, we do an example, the regression equation that I give is still in form of a line, because these are two quantities, it's in form of a line, given by the regression line now. Regression line. If one quantity is y and the other one is, 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 is what is x, we can say that y is given by uh, what? a plus bx. Basically, if you can be able to see this one, it is an equation of the form y is equal to mx plus c, which is the equation of a line. So we are still just using the equation of a line to be able to come and predict. So instead of drawing a graph to be able to come and predict, we are just using an equation. So that is the regression line. It is given by that y is equal to, uh, to a plus bx. So basically, the y will always be given, the x will always be given. So our main task is to come and get the value of a. And the value of b so b if you go back to correlation is almost the same as what you are doing on correlation on the uh, uh, calpiason x minus x bar this one y minus y bar where the y bar is the what is the is the mean and then now on the denominator that's where we have a chain the denominator we have summation of x minus x bar squared only that Remember in the, in, the, in the correlation coefficient, we had uh, the square root of x minus x bar squared, and then uh, times the square root of y minus y bar squared. So this one, we just have the, 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 you know, the summation of just x minus x bar. So that's how you get the value of b. But to get the value of a, a now, a will be given by the, the mean of y minus b, the mean of x. So the, after getting the value of b, we shall use it to get the value of a. So the a will be given by the mean of y minus b, the mean of x. So these are the two that you need to, to remember how to get the value of b and y, and then the, the regression line. After getting the value of, of a and b, we just substitute back there. So those are the two that you need. The b is the one that is a bit complicated, but the a is a bit easy for you to be able to do it. So we shall be able to predict a value and I'll be able to show you how we shall be able to predict. We do an example and then you'll be able to tell me if we have been able to understand. So let's do an example to demonstrate this. Example. So you can be given these quantities and you're told to get the regression line for these ones. So you have y, you have x, we have let's say 10, we have 12, we have 15, we have 13. Let's say you have 11. On this side you have 9, you have 8, you have 10, you have 13, let's say you have 15. 
or 14. So you want to get basically the, 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 the regression line for those variables. Bear with me, I'll be able to demonstrate what I mean by, by prediction. So the first thing we shall be able to do, first of all, is to come up with a table. We come up with, up with a table, we shall be able to input all this, what we need to get the value of B. So on the first one, we shall have basically uh, the Y. Uh, for sure, we shall have the X. Then you remember we, we need we need what we need x minus x bar is what we shall get. Then we need uh, y minus y bar. We still need that one. Then we need a combination of this one x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar. And finally we shall have here x minus x bar. The whole of this one square, the denominator, the square, it goes for the value of b. So let me put like that, put like that. So basically, the formulas are the most important thing if you want to do these ones. So I'll put like that, and I believe like that. So I'll, I'll, I'll put the, the values. So for the y, we have 10, 12, 15. 10, 10, 15. After the 15, you go up 13 and 11. 13 and 11. And then you go to, to the to the what to the x 9, 8, 10, 8, 10, and then 14 and 13. 14 and 13. So the first thing I'll do, I'll get the mean, I'll get the mean of y, first of all. I'll get the mean of y. By adding all these values, we shall add all those values. So the summation here will be able to come and assist us. So the summation here, summation here, let's get that summation. You see what you're getting there. So we have 10 plus 12 plus 15 plus 13 plus 11. This is 61. The summation of this one, when you add all those, that is 17 plus 24 plus 13. I'm getting 54. So the mean of y will be basically 61. We have only how many functions? We have five functions. They shall be 61. All of our five. On the x bar, shall be 54 all over 5. When you do this one, you are getting 61 divided by 5. That is 12.2. 12.2. And then 54 divided by 5, I'm getting 10.8. 10.8. 10 10 so now what we need to do do is to come and take x minus x bar. We take values of x, then we subtract our mean. So at the back of your mind, your mean is for x is 10.8. So I'll do the first one, 9 minus 10.8. 9 minus 10.8, that is our mean. We get negative 1 point, negative 1 point 8. When it's not writing that well, negative 1 point 8. I'm just doing the subtraction. Then negative one point eight and the first one, then I I'm I'm doing for x. So eight minus ten point eight and negative two point eight. Uh, ten minus ten point eight. We'll get a negative 0 0.8, uh, 14 minus 10.8, that is 3.2, and then 13 will get 2.2. Those are the for the values of, of x minus x bar. You take a value of x and then you subtract. Then I'll go to the y, our y is 12.2. So again, I'll subtract 10, 10 minus 12.2. That is negative 2.2. 
uh, 12 minus 12 points to negative 0 points to 15 minus 12 points to that is 2.8 so I'm on the values of y subtracting the mean and then 13 minus 12.2 I believe that one will be 0 0.8 11 minus 12.2 you get negative 1.2 so I'll multiply these together. Now you multiply this one. Check you multiply this one, whatever I'm marking in X and whatever I'm marking in X there. I multiply it together, that is X minus X bar. I multiply, that is negative uh, 1.8 times negative 2.2. It becomes positive, you get 3.96. The other one is 2.8 times 0 0.2. A negative times a negative, that is positive. 5, 6 is 5, 6. 0 0.8 times 2.8. The answer will be negative because you only have one negative. 2.24. 3.96. Point five six, two point five six, and then 2.2 times 1.2, negative, negative 2.6, there's a negative, a, po a positive times a negative is a negative. Then I'll get this summation here, summation of all that, 3.96 plus 0 0.56, minus 2.24 plus 2.56 minus 2.64 so you get here 2.2 when you add all those up you sum all these columns you sum you get i'm getting 2.2 then i'll get my x minus x bar squared so i square so 1.8 squared okay negative 1.8 times negative 1.8 I'm getting 3.24.24. That is for the first one, 3.24. Then I do 2.8 for negative 2.8. So you must put brackets. If you don't put brackets, you'll always get a negative. So when you're doing the square, please be careful. You put the brackets and then you square. And then 7.84. 7.84. For the square, you should not get a negative. 0 0.8 squared, 0, 0 0.64, 3.2 squared, 10.24, and then 2.2 squared, 4.84. Then we add all those, 3.24 plus 7.84 plus 0 0.64 plus 10.24 plus 4.8 I'm getting 26 when you do this summation you're getting 26.8 so my work now is to be able to come and get the value of a and b you have gotten all what we needed you have gotten all that we needed so it's for me to to come and get the value of b so b was given by summation of x minus x bar and then y minus y bar all of our summation of x minus x bar squared so if you go back my when i multiplied i got 2.2 2.2 that is 2.2 and then our summation of x minus x bar was 26.8 26.8 so when you divide these two 2.2 divided by 26.8 I'm getting 0 0.082 
and we can see 0 0.2 H21, I've rounded off. Now, after getting that one, we get the value of A. Our A was given by Y minus BX. All of them had the odd. Basically, the, the mean, go to the mean of Y. We have the mean of Y. The mean of Y was 12.2. Uh, it was 12.2. 12.2 uh, minus, let me just do it here, 12.2 minus, our B is 0 0.0821, and then you multiply with our X bar, our X bar was 10.8, our mean for X was 10.8. So if you do this one, 12.2, 0 0.0821, times 10.8. I'm getting the value of A is what? 11.313. At the value of A. So after getting the value of A and B, it is easy. I'll go back to the uh, regression equation, which was A is equals to, A was given by what? A plus, plus BX. So we shall have Y, our A is, 11.313 and then uh, plus our b was let me get uh, my b my b was 0 0.0821 0 0.0821 x x so that is basically the regression equation so that is the regression equation for the data, 11.313 plus 0 0.821. Now, let's say now, in your data, let's go back to the data that we had. So that we have this one. I forget about the table first of all. But this is the data that we have. We have for y, x, that is the relationship between these two quantities. For example, now, if I had done a mistake, I had another student here. Hmm. For the y, let's say for example for the y, or I say for the x, there was a value here that uh, that I had put, let's say like, uh, let's say like, uh, like what, like 16. And then I forgot to put the value for y. Can I be able to use the, the, the what, the equation for the first five variables to be able to predict the value of x? Yes, oh, sorry, sorry, to predict the value of y, yes. Because now you have the regression equation. So the regression equation now, we have taken basically five variables that have a relationship and we have gotten an equation. Now what you want to do is to predict. Let's say for example with X, uh, maybe he got 16 in a cut 16. And we want to see in, in the other, because the two have a relationship basically, maybe in maths he got 16 and in English we forgot to put a mark. Can we be able to predict how many marks we, he, uh, he got? basically there, and will it be able to give us a good feeling? Let us see what is happening on this map. If this one, let's say this one is a uh, math, let's say for example, and this one is English, you can be able to see that this student is performing much better uh, in, it's like, a, it's like an almost average, 10, 9, 12, 8, 15, 10, then there's a time he's performing 13, 14, then 11, 13. So you want to predict if he got English 16, at a particular time, when we forgot to put the marks for maths, we want to predict that value and we want to use the regression equa equation. So what I'll just do, I'll take the English, the 16, for X, I come down here, because I have, so remember for X we have said, we want to predict for Y and you want to use this equation. So the value that we have been given is what? X is equals to what? 16, you want to get the corresponding value of Y. So what we shall just, input is the value of x in the equation. So y will be given by 11.313 plus 0 0.0821. And then we multiply by 16. We want to see if we shall have a good feeling. How much? 11.313 plus 0 0.821 is 0.0. .0 8 to 1 times 16. So what I'm getting, I'm getting 
6.2. But the value I'm getting or 6.3 if you round off. So if you go back up, basically because we always round off, if you are, if you are giving for whole numbers now, from 12.63, the value that we'll be able to give this student here, if I was doing this, the fair mark that I'll get, instead of guessing, it will be 13. If you round off to the next value, it will be 13. It will be 13. So if we have been able to use one of the variable x to be able to predict another value that is what? That is y, basically using the regression equation. Now a person will ask. Now, and what if uh, you you, uh, you 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 put a mark for for y and you missed for x? You put a value for y and you missed for x. So, for example, if you are to continue with this table here, up here, let's say this one is our y, this one is our x. If you continue with this table, what if you had put a mark for y? Let's say this student got a nine. Is it possible to come and predict the value of x? Yes, it is still possible. Let's go back and see if it is possible. So the value of y is nine. You want to predict the value of x. So again, again I'll use the regression equation. The regression is, equation is given by this one. Y is equals to, it is up here, uh, 11.313 plus 0.0821 x. So this one is a matter of just solving. So what we need to do, we have been given a value of x. We have been given the value of y. If y is equals to nine, can we able to get the value of x? If y is equals to nine, can we able to get the value of x? Let's see. If y is equal to nine, we shall be able to substitute back. We shall get nine is equals to 11.313 plus 0.0821. One x. So it's a matter of just solving. We bring neck terms together. So nine minus uh, nine minus what? And when this one will come, it's a nine minus eleven point three one three. I hope that is correct. Zero point zero. Eight to one times ten to eight minus twelve. So it's still okay. So we we bring the terms together. If you got a nine, you want to see, we able to predict a value for x. So eleven point one three is equals to zero point zero eight two one x. So nine minus eleven. Three, three one three. I'm getting negative two point three one three is equals to zero point. 0821x. So when you divide this one, negative 2.313 divided by 0 0.0821. I'm getting a very big, uh, a weird value, negative 28.17. Yeah. One seven is equal to x. I don't know if I've made a mistake or I'm wondering. Oh, let me see. Is still okay? That is eleven here. We got a value. So when 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 y is equal to nine, I'm getting a negative twenty eight point something, which is not giving me any. When y is equal to nine. That value should not be like that. Maybe the summer we have done a mistake. Then be a value that is only that is so far. Be able to confirm later, but that value should not be negative. Maybe the summer we have done a small mistake. 
you should be you should be getting a value that is close to the other variables. So that one can they ignore that one? You should not you should not be getting a negative value. Maybe in the calculation there's somewhere I did a mistake without knowing. But that's how you you, you 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 predict. Maybe I can be able to do another example just to demonstrate that. But I think the, uh, there uh, is somewhere I've made a mistake. I made a mistake to predict a value. Let me do another one. A final one. So the most important thing is to get the formula correct. If you get the formula co correct, then you're done. So number two, that value that we have gotten doesn't make any sense. So let's say you have your x here. You have your y. And then you need to get x minus x bar, y minus y bar, then x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar, and then finally x minus x bar. The order here doesn't matter, you can start with any, the order doesn't matter, but always the x and the y will be the first start. Now some values, I'm just putting values that will just fit on the board to make my work easier. Now we are as say, Now these values, and then this side you can able to have is it 30, 50, 55, now 25, this is 60, and now we are around 70. You do for that one. So for if you want to do for this one, we first of all need to get the mean. So the mean, I will just add these values here for x. So we add 20 plus 30, sorry, 20 plus 40 plus 50 plus 10 plus 60. Then we divided by how many? 1, 2, 3, that's 10, 5. Okay. I'm getting the mean for x, x bar is 36. You do the mean for y. That is 30 plus 50 plus 55 plus 25 plus 70. 30 divided by 5. I'm getting the almost similar y bar is equal to 46. So what I'll do, I'll take my x, I subtract my x bar. So my first x is what? X is 20. 20 minus 36 will get me negative 16. Uh, you'll get a 4, 50, 50 minus 36, you'll get, is it 14? I think 14, 10, 10 minus 36. I think you're having a calculator usually assist. Let me make some, and then 60 minus 36. You can be confirming my answer, I don't, so at least I don't make any mistake. Then we shall go to y, 30 minus 46. I'm getting negative 16, and then 50 minus 46, that is uh, 4, uh, 55 plus 4, that is 9, 25 minus 46, that is negative 21, and then 70 minus 46, I'm getting 24. So I'll multiply 16 times 16. We shall be positive 256. This is 16. 14 times 9. 126. This one is supposed to be positive 26 times 21. A negative times a negative. 546. And then 24 squared. 
576. I'll add all, all those up. 256 plus 16 plus 126 plus 5, 536 plus 576. I'm getting here, if you add all these things, I'm getting 1520. Then I'll do my, I'll go to the x minus x bar squared, that is 16 squared. In this, in this column, we shall always get positive values. If you get a negative value, the summary you have done wrong. This one will be 16, 14 squared, 196. And six squared, six seventy six, six seventy six. Six, seven, and six. And then uh, 24 squared. Already done it. Five, 76. And they add all those. 256 plus 16 plus 196 plus 676 plus 5. I'm getting 1720 when you add all those up. 1720. So the summation there will be given by that 1720. So I'll just go to the value of. I'll just be able to go to the value of how to get basically the B. Uh, the B. Remember the B was given by summation of this one. Summation. So this one here will be my numerator. That is 1520. 1520 and then summation of x minus x bar which is 1720 back to the formula that i gave you summation of x minus x bar y minus y bar and the numerator in the numerator we have summation of x minus x bar so 1520 divided by 1720 i'm getting 0.884 and then we said our, our A was given by Y minus Y bar and then B, B X bar. That's why we are getting the B first. So our, our Y bar is 46 and then our B is 0 0.884 times our X bar is 36. So 0 0.884 times 36 and then 46 minus answer. I'm getting this one as con confirm, confirm 0.176. So if I have the value of B and A, so our Y was given by B, okay, still okay, it was given by BX plus, plus A, you know, I've given it like this, A plus BX, but it doesn't matter. So let me use this one. Our A is 14.176, and then plus our, our value of B is 0 0.884, and then X. Let me confirm this one. Because the other one, yeah, I ran into problems, I think there was something I've done. If you want to predict a value, Let's pick a value of y and c. Let's pick a value of y that is not there. So we want to predict a value when maybe the student got, uh, let's say like uh, 60, but when y is 60, we see the corresponding value of x. Let's see now, if y is 60, let's get the value of, let's get the value of x. Well, if y is equals to 60, x will be what? So we substitute back in the equation. So where is a y are replaced with the 60? And then I'll have 14.176 plus 
plus 0 0.884x. Then what I want to do is to bring the comes together, this one. This one can go on this other side, so I'll subtract 60 minus 14.176, I get 45.824 is equals to 0.884x. Then I divide here by 0 0.884. Divided here by 0 0.884. One and this one will cancel. So divided by 0 0.88. I'm getting that x will be given by 51.837. Which if I round off because they are if I round off it will become to it will become to 51, 52. So you can be able to see there was a mark that was not there, 60. I can be able to predict a value of x. Instead of guessing the value of x, I've been able to use the regression equation to predict. I believe in the previous example, they somehow had done a mistake because you should never get a negative mark. You will never be able to get a negative mark. So if I go back here, if the student had scored somewhere 60 on the y, let me go back here. On the y, if he had scored here 60, let's say here 60, the corresponding mark for x will be 50. 52. Basically, you can be able to see, I've been able to predict. And I've shown you, if you have a value of x, you can still be able to, to predict. So I've given you an exercise again. Uh, on the portal, you can be able to, to, to do the exercise, and then you'll be able to tell me how it is faring. It is still a simple exercise, but I want you to get the, re the regression line. Get the regression line for that one, and then we can be able at least to comment at least on, on, on the values you got. On the values you've got. Uh, anyone with a question so far?